So I'm from the Newcastle Historical Society, and we are an old organization uh, in town. We've been around since 1934. We're a, a private nonprofit, and basically our job is to try and preserve uh, the history of Newcastle and share that history uh, with the public. Um, so I'm going to kind of quickly go through how we do that. Hopefully you'll maybe find out something that we do some things you didn't know about. Um, so what do we do? One of the things we do is historical research on uh, the city of Newcastle and its environs, as we talk about it. Um, and it, it could be a wide variety of topics. Of course, we talk um, and research about the buildings here in Newcastle that everyone is so fond of. But there's so many different aspects to Newcastle's history. It's very rich. It goes back a long time, really thousands of years, um, even before Europeans settled here. So these are some um, of the topics that we have researched in the past. Sometimes they make their way into a museum exhibit that you're welcome to come and see, often at the old library museum. Um, sometimes they make their way into publications, lectures, or other public programs. Uh, other things that we do, we collect stuff. We're museums, so we find old stuff, people give us old stuff, and we hold on to it, as long as it has something to do with Newcastle and Newcastle's history. So we have a wide variety of collections, and our collections are available and open to the public. So if somebody's interested in learning something else about Newcastle, maybe you are looking to research your own home. Maybe you're uh, very interested in, I don't know, embroidery, and you'd like to see some historic embroidery. We may have some things you'd be interested in looking at. Um, so our collections span all sorts of things, furniture, art, textiles, books. Um, we also have archives, and archives are typically um, paper-based, so we have photographs there, we have historic documents, um, we have maps, and we have uh, sort of a small library. We also try and preserve physically historic resources in the town, some of which we own. We own the Amstel House Museum at 4th and Delaware Streets. We also own the Dutch House uh, Museum, which is over at, uh, on, at 32 East 3rd Street, about right across uh, from the green. Um, but we also take care of our uh, properties, our lots, which are gar often um, really maintained as garden spaces. And of course, there are also resources that we own on, on our properties that you can't really see. Those would be things underground uh, that people have left there from previous um, uh, living uh, arrangements on the properties. Um, and those are archaeological resources. Um, not only do we take care of the ones on our properties, but we try and help other people um, take care of the archaeological resources on their properties. Um, that's where we get into community resources. So um, we work with a lot of different organizations. Cindy's organization, Breton at the Reed House, um, the National Park Service, uh, the trustees and the city, we all work together. Um, a big project that, the, uh, that we worked kind of closely with the trustees on was an archaeological investigation at the site of Fort Casimir back in 2019. I sort of lost track of time at this point. Um, so we were doing um, an archaeological investigation there. We learned a lot about the fort. Um, hopefully that's going to make its way into a public exhibit and you'll all be able to come and visit us. Um, we also try and teach people that live in Newcastle or might have historic resources of their own um, how they can take care of it and maybe some uh, ways that they can approach restoring their house. Uh, maybe they can take advantage of some tax advantages, um, things that were available through the state for historic preservation. So that's part of our job too. One of the main things we do, probably one of the most public things that we do, is uh, we help people understand Newcastle's history through our museums. So our Amstel House Museum and our Dutch House Museum are open to the public. Um, you can come in and tour the museums. You can learn about the people that live there. Mostly that goes back to around the 18th century. We talk not only about the people that live there, but what was going on in Newcastle and, and in the country at the time. Um, over at the old library, we use that as a space where we have changing uh, exhibits on Newcastle history. So here's a picture of the old library. Um, with an exhibit on the Italian uh, community here in Newcastle. Um, the upper uh, right picture is uh, one of the rooms at the Amstel House. We also provide information online. Um, if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, you'll find some content there. Some of it's um, pretty quick and uh, short attention span sort of history. Others, if you go to YouTube, you'll see some longer videos that talk about 
different topics of Newcastle's past, such as the Great Fire of 1824. We also host community events and other programs uh, as well. Most of our other programs are centered around uh, public education. So I already mentioned museum tours that we do and exhibits that we do. Um, we have a free audio walking tour on our website. Um, you can just grab your smartphone, go to visit newcastlehistory.org and just stream it and walk around town hearing me prattle on about so all the exciting and interesting houses and histories um, around Newcastle. Very well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we have lectures and webinars. Um, last night we had a webinar on historic paint analysis in the Amstel House. Next Wednesday, um, in partnership with uh, Cindy and the folks at the courthouse, we're going to be have, having an in-person, yay, uh, lecture at the Arsenal with Brian Cannon. Um, he's the author of a new book um, called Delaware Disappearance. I'm um, going to have some flyers over here on the table you're welcome to pick up. But we're having uh, that in person at the Arsenal. We're also going to be live streaming it on the web. So if you're not comfortable quite yet coming out, you can do, you can do that too. Um, we have cultural events. We've done concerts. We do dances and balls. Um, we uh, already talked about digital content. And occasionally we'll come out with a new book. Um, this year we released, actually 2021, we released... Um, a book called A History of Newcastle, which is a compendium of Alexander B. Cooper's histories of Newcastle that they wrote back at the beginning of the 20th century. So um, we're trying to get information out about Newcastle's history in a lot of different ways um, because everybody learns in different ways. Uh, so we like to have a variety of options for you. We are based in the Arsenal. That's where our administrative offices are. Um, we also offer the Arsenal as uh, a place where you can hold private events. So if you wanted to have a birthday party or wedding or a shower or something like that, you can host it there in a very nice historic setting. Um, we operate a visitor center in the Arsenal. So we welcome people from all over the place, all over the world really, um, to Newcastle. And we have a nice one-stop shop where they can come and learn about what there is to do in Newcastle. They can watch an orientation video and figure out what they, how they'd like to spend their day. Um, and this is also where we have a lot of our collections stored. So up on the second floor, we have um, our archival collection there and our textiles and some art there. And those are some of our more frequently used collections. So if you wanted to do some research, give us a call and come over to the Arsenal. We'll set you up with the time to take a look at some things. Uh, and then finally, just some lovely pictures of our museums and gardens. So um, it's a great place to work. It's a lot of fun to volunteer there. We're always looking for people to get involved. And we are a membership organization, so we are really supported by our community. We're Newcastle's Historical Society. Uh, we're not for the county, we're for the town. So if you're interested in joining us um, and supporting um, the preservation of, of the town, you're welcome to join us as a member, join us as a volunteer, um, or just come out to a program and see what we have to offer. I do have, again, some literature over here, um, as well as membership information, if you'd like to uh, join us. And if you want to reach us, I have my business cards over here too. And I also put up um, some contact information for both me and our public programs manager, Karen Jones. So, does anybody have any questions? Oh, Bill, yeah. Anyway, um, now this, uh, um, that you guys have nothing to do with the Sheriff's House, correct? We do not. Uh, right. The Sheriff's House is now owned by the National Park Service. It's now owned by National Park Service. Do you have any information on that as far as when renovations start? Do you know anything? Uh, Cindy may know a little bit more. Sometime soon, renovations will be getting underway. I think it's this year, right? Yeah. They hope in the spring that they'll be able to start some okay. work. And they'll be speaking on, the, on our last... Yes. They'll be speaking on the 31st. Yeah. We'll have the new superintendent here, and he will be telling you a lot more. Okay, yeah, I, I, I thought that it had shifted over to the state. Yep. Right. Yep, went from the state to the Fed. Yep. To the federal government. Uh -huh. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks very much for your attention. Thanks for